Good Monday morning to you YouTubers. This is Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. Back once again at long last with another in our series of military MRE reviews from 2004. 2004 was the, about the second year of the Iraq War. All you folks that were out there in the sandbox probably remember these particular MRE menus. So, what's up with menu number seven? Chicken with salsa is the entree. Also included is Mexican rice, shortbread cookie, jalapeno cheese spread, vegetable crackers, some kind of candy, mocha cappuccino drink, which I may try, hot sauce, that's probably Tabasco in one of the little bottles. If so, it may or may not be completely dried out. Accessory pack at C. The ubiquitous MRE spoon, which we see one of here. I'll not unwrap the new one. Put it away for camping supplies. Flameless ration heater. And what should we expect in accessory packet C? Some kind of uh, instant tea with sweetener and lemon flavor. Salt, chewing gum, matches, toilet tissue and a hand cleaner or hand sanitizer moist towelette. Let's get started. So we have a different peelable seal opener today that being this Coleman branded folding knife and we'll see why in a little while. So let's use the peelable seal opener to open the peelable seal. And there we go. Okay, menu number seven. And out comes the baby. Mexican style rice, 276th day of 2004. It's nice when you can see the dates very easily. Jalapeno cheese spread, 275th day of 2004. Shortbread cookies. Second day of 2004. Accessory pack at C. And let's take a look with our EDC flashlight here. Let's see whether this hot sauce is still liquid. Oh, it is. How oh, nice. You might be able to see that. Maybe not. But the Tabasco sauce is, in fact, liquid. It's sort of a reddish brown in color. There's the iced tea drink mix, matches gum, toilet paper, sugar, and salt probably. And we may or may not open that later. I kind of like that iced tea mix, so I might, I might mix it up and I might save it for camping. Backpack. There's the spoon. We already have one opened up, so we're going to place this to the side. <clears throat> Accessory pack at A has a date on it of 316th day of 2004. Cappuccino mocha mix. 266th day of 2004. Crackers. Vegetable. Three hundred and eighth day of two thousand and four. Now, how do I know this menu is two thousand and four and not twenty fourteen? Because I bought these in two thousand five, so it couldn't have been twenty fourteen, right? Flameless ration heater. Three hundred ninth day of two thousand and four. We're going to try this. We have as our standard backup a pot of boiling water on the stove in the. Uh, in the field where I camping or backpacking with these meals I would have along my portable uh, MSR stove or one of my alcohol burners and something to cook in, a small pot, and I would heat the entree up with that. 
And here's the entree, speaking of which. Chicken breast strip with chunky salsa. 287th day of 2004. That's probably going to be pretty good. And the candy was peanut butter M&M's. Which is interesting because that's about the time they came out with those, sometime around that year. Um, seems like only yesterday to some of us that have been around a while, but the peanut butter M&Ms are relatively new to the M&M stable of candies. This package appears to be in pretty good shape. And we'll see how it fared over 13, 14 years of storage. As always, we have our double wall insulated peak coffee cup or hot drink cup also works for cold drinks for our rock or something to set the MRE entree on once it's in the FRH envelope we have this copy of a, of a Walther P9 I believe it is and it's my favorite spider gun it's also an airsoft pistol So, let's get this all out onto my OD green tray here and take a look at how things survived all these years. Okay, there it is. Everything including the rock or something. So, I'm going to get this started. We'll put the chicken with salsa entree and the Mexican rice side dish into the FRH envelope if they'll both go in there. And then add a little bit of water and see if it's going to fire up. If not, we do have the pot of boiling water standing by. Okay. We're going to open up the FRH envelope. And the tricky part is, since my hands are exceptionally clean and I have no fingernails, Use the knife blade to get into that. Oh, there we go. All right. So this is the old style flameless ration heater. They may still be using this. True Tech Incorporated, Riverhead, New York. It says patent number, etc. But anyway, there are four separate elements in there that have probably iron filings in them or something. I understand that's what they used to use. So let's put the entree on this side. See if we can squeeze the rice in on the other side. It's going to be a tight fit, I can tell you right now. that up a little bit. So I folded the edge of that over. And we'll see if it'll make it any easier. It's not going too easy, but it is. have a shoehorn to do this or something. The heater element is kind of sticking out in between them. It's not exactly what I wanted. You can see I pushed that down. Now if I can get the Mexican rice down in there as well. We can all celebrate. That's it. Let's not overfill this. Caution, do not overfill, right? Okay, so put some water in there. And that looks just about right. Maybe a tad more. Okay. Okay. 
Now, we're going to have to go by smoke with, it's smoking so it's heating up. Because the element is sandwiched in there between those two pouches, I really can't feel the heat from touching it. But I saw the smoke and that's a good indicator. Let's see if we can, and it's puffing up like crazy, so hopefully it won't explode. Alright, we're going to lay this down on our rock or something. Okay. And let her cook. We need to have some hot water for the mocha mix. So I'm going to fix up some hot water and we'll get right back here and take a look at that. We are back and let's go ahead and Mix up the mochaccino or whatever it's called. Cappuccino mocha, so I guess that would be a mochaccino. Alright, take a look in there. Nice and powdery, smells great. This is actually the only way, practically, that anybody can get me to drink coffee except in an emergency. I love how coffee smells, but I'm not great, greatly fond of how it tastes. Here we go. I'm going to put about six ounces of water in there. Six ounces of water for most of these things, but that's usually what they say. A quarter canteen cup or a third, whatever. Take a look at that. That looks pretty tasty. Alright, I'm going to set this accessory pack aside for a second. M&M's peanut. Three, let's see, I can't tell when it was packed. They have different state codes on their stuff than the military. So, let's slice that open. And we'll put them down here. So, M&M's peanuts. We got one, two of them that are smashed. I don't know why, maybe from rough handling or something. I doubt that they could actually be crunched that flat in storage, but whatever. They're fairly big size, about the size of a dime. And several different colors there, orange, yellow, brown, blue, green, and red. They look pretty good, and we'll try one here in a bit. Shortbread cookies will be out next. Um, they didn't fare very well in the storage. They smell a little stale. <coughs> no wonder why shortbread is made with all kinds of oil lard or vegetable shortening and that tends to go rancid over time. I might try a bite of one but I doubt that I'm going to eat them. Give them a smell right now close up and see what happens. Yeah, they're they're rancid. So, but they look good. And we'll have a little taste of one just to say we did. All right, let's set accessory packet C aside for a little bit. I'm going to get some cold water and mix up that iced tea shortly. Let's take a look at the crackers. There's a good little hiss as air went into that vacuum packed environment. I like to get them out at least without breaking them before I have a chance to look at them. So we use the trusty unsealer for that. Now 
At first blush, these vegetable style crackers are a little bit browner and tanner in color. They have a lot of little specks on them. They look like they are also salted because they're pretty sparkly. You may be able to pick up that sparkle there in the light. Other than that, besides being tan with some flecks of brownish colored stuff, which is probably the vegetable component, and sparkly, they look pretty much like other MRE crackers, which almost never break along the score lines. Next up we're going to knead this packet of jalapeno cheese spread for a minute or two and then we'll cut into that and see how it looks on the crackers, so stand by. So I've kneaded this packet for a couple of minutes now and I'm just it's much softer than it was. It was pretty hard there for a minute, but it's nice and cheesy, spready, kind of soft. So, like I like to do, we're going to make a little squirt pouch hole on there. Might have just cut my finger. We'll know in a minute. Ooh. That knife is very sharp. Okay, here we go. Jalapeno cheese spread. Doesn't look bad. Looks pretty much consistent with what we've come to expect for that. It's um, kind of a dull yellowish orange and there are flecks in it. Probably the ground up jalapeno. It smells like it. Crackers smell a little bit stale, but not as much as they generally do. I don't know why that is. Anyway, taste test time. I'm waiting for the jalapeno heat to kick in. It usually does after a minute or so. Crackers are very dry, so the addition of the jalapeno cheese spread makes it worthwhile. If I were someplace where I was short of water, I wouldn't eat those crackers alone, believe me, just like sponges in terms of dryness. So I believe we're going to try a little bit of our mochaccino. This cup keeps it quite hot, it's still steaming a lot. Cheers. I have to say that's much more flavorful using only six ounces of water than rather filling this cup all the way to the brim. Ooh! But it's still quite hot. Very, very hot. See if we can feel any heat out of the retort pouch here and stick my fingers down inside. And it's still cool. I smell the, the gas that's associated with the flameless ration heater pretty pretty well. I'm going to give it about five more minutes. I'll take those pouches out of there and feel them. If they're not hot, they'll go in the boiling water. Okay, as promised, we're going to try one of these shortbread cookie pieces. And only one, because they smell pretty rancid. Oh man. Might not even take that whole piece. very dry and what you would associate with the flavor of shortbread is pretty well masked by the rather off-putting smell and taste of rancid fat. I'm going to make do it a favor and drink some of this. Oh man. No, we won't be eating the rest of those, that's for sure. Alright, let's move on to one of these M&Ms while we're waiting for good news from the Flameless Ration Heater Department. So this one is undamaged, it's green, and we'll give it a shot. The 
peanut butter in there tastes just slightly off. Slightly old, but nowhere near as rancid tasting as these cookies smell or taste. I'm not going to eat any more of them. On the outside of some of them, like this green one here, there's a little bit of oil that's congealed. Whatever the oil was that made, made these with is leaching out of some of those thin candy shells, as they're fond of calling them. That was passable. I think it was probably safe to eat. I'm not going to eat those anymore. But they're okay. I wouldn't pass them up in a, a SHTF situation or even camping. At least not on an unplanned overnight stay. If I were planning for a camping trip, I'd be taking brand new food probably. But I always have with me in my backpack at least one of these or something like it. Mountain House or something else. I still have a number of these left, maybe 10. So uh, I'm going to keep them in the deep freeze where they are. That seems to preserve them a little bit better. I'll have some more jalapeno cheese spread. I'm copying here Polly from Polly's MRE and things. MRE reviews and things. He makes a, something he calls a peanut buddy out of the peanut butter spread, so I made a jalapeno buddy on this cracker. Here's to you, Polly. Very dry. The jalapeno flavor is not what I've come to expect from these jalapeno cheese spreads in that there's really not much heat involved with it. Maybe I didn't need them quite enough. Put another dollop on there. Man, that's dry. Wow. But on the upside, the crackers aren't as stale as MRE crackers usually are. So they got that going for them. Okay, here we have a tumbler. I'm going to set our mocha off to the side. And I decided I want to try the iced tea. Well, it's not going to be iced tea because I'm not putting ice in it, but I am putting cold water. So there it is, iced tea drink mix. And I guess it's only iced tea if you put ice in it, which I'm not going to do. Slice it open. It's nice and powdery in there. No clumps to speak of. And here we go. It has a strange <coughs> aroma kind of citrusy maybe a little bit. So here goes some just purified drinking water about to there. We learned our lesson with the mocha drinks. Don't put too much water. So I don't see any suspicious particles floating in there that shouldn't by appearance be in there. It's not dissolving very readily, so it may be required to stir it a little bit more than usual. So we'll let it sit. <clears throat> now we are getting some of the heat from the jalapeno cheese spread. It's finally started to warm up a little bit in the back of my mouth. Here's the famous Lighthouse MRE toilet paper. Moist towelette. Now this has been packed for 14 years approximately. I'm going to tear it open and actually use it towards the end of the video here to see how well it held up. My experience with some commercially prepared and sold moist towelettes is that they're only good for maybe a year and then when you open them up they're dry. So we'll see what, how that goes. Salt, which may be good to put on the chicken. MRE uh, entree and the Mexican rice. 
chewing gum. Coating looks pretty shiny. Probably all right. Matches, white tips. Moisture proof or damp proof, they say. And yeah, still good. And last but least, Tabasco sauce. You may not be able to see very well. I'm going to kind of rock the bottle back and forth. You see that that is in fact liquid. I'm not going to open that bottle because I'm not a fan of Tabasco sauce, especially not 14 years old Tabasco sauce. But there it is anyway. So that's the contents of the accessory packet. Probably most of that stuff's going to go in my administrative box for spare parts. Let's give the tea a whirl and see how that is. Bottoms up. That's pretty strong. I might add a little bit more water to that. Maybe I didn't put enough. Very strong tea flavor. It's not an herbal tea. It's a black tea. The flavor of lemon is definitely there. And also there's some kind of sweetener in it. See if I can determine what that is. Sugar! No, oh, that's the best kind, I guess. At least it's not an artificial chemical. And it's got vitamin C, 0%, so that's always helpful. Sugar, instant tea, citric acid, maltodextrin, natural and artificial flavors, tricalcium phosphate, prevents caking. Though so it didn't turn into a cake, that's for sure. Alright, so another shot of this here. Almost looks like a really dark ale, but I assure you it's tea. Not bad. I think I the extra water I added to that helped out quite a bit. That's about as strong as I like tea. And it's still nice and dark too. I didn't over dilute it. Okay, let's bring out the... I gotta have some more of this. I can't help it. Let's bring out the big guns here. Okay, I can feel some warmth on the outer side of the box here right now. Underneath a little bit down towards the bottom. So that tells me that it's doing its thing. So I'm going to leave it another five minutes and uh, take them out. If they need to go in the boiling water at that point, we'll put them in, pop them in there. First I need to inspect the outer pouches, the retort pouches, to make sure there's no pinholes in them or anything like that. Because if I find anything like that, this kid won't be eating it. All right? So, get back to you shortly. Okay, we're back. Enough time has gone by now that we should have an idea of whether these got hot enough. Now, keep in mind that the heater element is in between these two pouches. In between the retort pouches for the Mexican style rice and the chicken with salsa. So, let's pull them out of there and see how hot they are. Now, that's going to have to go in boiling water. It's warm, not hot. It's quite easy to hang onto that packet. Same for the rice. So we'll give them about 10 minutes in the boiling water and get back to you. So the entree is in the boiling water now, and so is the side dish of Mexican-style rice. So in the meantime, let's talk about something else for a minute. We just passed 300 subscribers here on the channel. I think this morning when I looked at it, it was 302. And that calls for a giveaway. So I have a couple items picked out here for the giveaway. The winner's going to get their choice of which they want. So item number one is this laser light branded knife that's designed to go on a Picatinny rail. Specifically Glock Picatinny rails. And this one did exactly fit perfectly on a Glock 23. I never carried it that way. Just put it on to see if it fit, and um, it did. 
and then ever since that time it's been off with the scabbard on it and been in my knife storage place. So how you get the scabbard off, there's a little tab here, you push it to the right and out comes the blade. So they're pretty good steel, they look to be a high carbon steel, have a pretty uh, standard grind, almost a hollow ground but maybe not quite. A lot of aggressive edges up here. Not really saw teeth, but in a pinch you could use them for that. This blade is fairly sharp, but I will, if the winner chooses this prize, uh, sharpen that some more before it goes out. I've never used this other than just to clip it on the Glock 23 that I used to have and see if it fit. So these again are branded Laser Light. This one's a zombie green. Pretty pretty quirky that's why I ordered it because it was a green and I liked it that way put it back in the scabbard you just put the blade in kind of push that tab over slide it in there and wiggle it around a little bit till it clicks on and there you go anyway it's a nice blade if you don't want to put it on your Glock you can always put it in your go bag it's a decent blade for that it's a nice stout blade. You could probably do a little minor batoning of twigs with it if you needed to. Split some twigs for firewood. So along with that goes this black one. And this is also laser light branded. The difference with this one is, first of all, it's black. And if you want to compare side by side with the blades, you can see it has a wider blade. See the difference? Not necessarily a longer blade, I think they're the same. But the profile of the blade is much wider and it doesn't have nearly the aggressive jumping on the top. It has some right here. There's a little bit right there so you can get some control of it if you wanted to hold it that way. You can also get a pretty firm grip on it. And there's a little bit of a choil right here to kind of keep your fingers away, but there's a finger guard here as well. Let's see that. right there. This one is a lot sharper than the other one is. I don't know why that is, but again, if the winner chooses um, these knives, then they'll go out newly sharpened. And the scabbards are made to fit the particular blade, so you have to get the right one. Snap back on, and now that's safe to carry. It does not have a lanyard hole, so you wouldn't use it necessarily for a neck knife but for a small kit got all the knife you need and I believe you could probably um, get a deer and skin a deer with one of these. The blade is that stout it wouldn't bend or fold on you. And again here's the other one. Um, there's a little choil back here but it's essentially worthless. You wouldn't want to stick your finger right there. Right there. I'd hold it back here if it were me. And there's a little bit of a place to put your thumb right there so you could do a little bit more fine work with it. Again, it's a pretty stout blade for a small knife. It's not going to bend under use. Um, you could possibly uh, do some minor batoning with it. And it's also a good enough blade to skin an animal up to the size of a deer. Probably be alright. Again, I'll sharpen that before it goes out if the winner chooses that prize. And the alternate prize is this Coleman uh, folding camp knife. I haven't used this one. I did have it in my glove box for a while in my car, but other than that I haven't used it except to open the MRE envelope today. It has a thumb stud that's on either side, so it's ambidextrous. There's about an inch of serration right there. And then the rest of the blade, which is a, it's almost a semi-spear point. It's a drop point blade, I guess. Uh, looks like bead blasted steel. Has a Coleman emblem on it. The handle scales are aluminum. And it's a liner lock style. And on the other end, we have a loop that you could use for a lanyard. But there you go. Now you can see it right there. You can use that, put that uh, a lanyard through that. Or alternately, that I believe is... Pretty handy for cracking a windshield with or a side window on a car if you needed to get out in an emergency. Just press that 
end of the glass down towards the corner and that little shatter. You don't have to you don't have to hammer on it like that. All you do is just press it with really good force and most of the safety glass windows will shatter. So that's the alternate prize and the winner is going to have to let me know which one they want. This is a really good feeling knife in the hand. It doesn't have a choil up front. It has serrations there but it's got finger grooves right here. You can hold it really firmly right this. It's got a good grip on it and do some cutting with it. Cut rope and fibers with that part. Um, gut a fish or skin a small animal with the, this part and it's very sharp. I'll touch it up a little bit but it really doesn't need it. You can always sharpen these to your own uh, preference when you get them. So this would be the alternate prize. So the winner is either going to get those two um, Gerber made blades that fit on a Glock pistol rail or this Coleman knife. Either one. Okay, that'll be the giveaway. In order to win the giveaway, all you have to do is comment on this video and say which ones you want, whether you want the two small uh, laser light knives, the black one and the zombie green one together, or whether you want the Gerber Kemp knife. That's all you got to do is just say which one. Comments beyond that are certainly welcome, but that's all it takes to win. And we'll get back to the entrees here in about five minutes. All right, we've got the pouches out of the boiling water and they're cooling. Ooh, wow, they're still hot, very hot. Whoa, it's very hot. Both of the retort pouches when they were in the boiling water puffed up huge, but now that they're cooling off, they're going back to their uh, vacuum style uh, slowly because they're still quite hot. But that's a good place to open them as long as we don't get scalded doing it. So, just a demo. We'll demo one of these knives by K Bar. That's the first thing it's actually ever cut. Let's take a look down in there. That looks pretty good, actually. It smells like it's got green peppers in it. That would be the salsa, green peppers and tomatoes and that kind of stuff. So, I'm going to set that aside for a minute because we're going to pour that over the rice. Oh man, is that ever hot? Holy cow. Alright. There's the second thing that knife ever cut. Okay, there's the rice. Smells pretty good. Dump that out on the tray. Use a spoon to get every last delightful biteful that we can get out of there. That's about it. We'll zoom in on that a little bit. So right off the bat there's a little piece of red pepper there it looks like and there's more in there as I stir this around. Here's a kernel of corn. After that long in the pouch maybe it's a general of corn but there's a kernel right on the end of the spoon and another one, several of them in there. I'm going to take a little spoonful of this and give it the smell test. Smells pretty uh, authentically south of the border. Here's your good health, and mine too. The rice is very chewy, you can imagine it would be as it's been in that package for a long time. The um, flavor of the peppers comes through pretty good. 
uh, chili peppers and red peppers probably the same thing there's a couple of them right there also some green stuff in there might be cilantro all in all not too bad all right let's put the chicken on there Chicken breast strips with rib meat, chopped and formed with chunky salsa. Well, there we have it. Let's explore that a little bit. Big chunks of green pepper right there. Big chunks of tomato. Can't miss it. Now look how much goes into that spoon. Get two of them there, you have a whole spoonful. So they didn't skimp on the tomatoes and peppers at all. That's very colorful still after 14 years in the box close to 14 years I'll mix it up with the rice there and let's try a piece of that chicken here we go well the tomato we taste is sure there man alive taste the tomatoes and the peppers and the other south of the border spices that are in there. Um, let's see, let's have a green pepper and some red. Still has texture to it after all these years it still has texture. That's great. Tomato. And another piece of chicken. A little rice on there too. Okay, we got a corn, piece of tomato, some chicken. Hard and blazes hmm. from the boiling water. Take a swig of our tea to cool that down. Cheers. And maybe just a little bit more of the jalapeno cheese and crackers. These crackers, I have to say, and I think I said before, better than what usually comes with MREs in terms of not tasting or smelling altogether stale. They do smell stale a little bit, but not bad. All right, so ratings time. This, two thumbs up. Way up. This is good. I wouldn't have any problem with eating that on the trail. The jalapeno cheese spread, pretty good. The crackers, somewhat stale and very dry, but otherwise not bad. Give them one thumb up. The peanut butter M&Ms, one. And the shortbread cookies, hell no, not eating those. Okay, so this has been a review of 2004 Vintage, menu number seven, chicken with salsa, Mexican rice, vegetable crackers, jalapeno cheese spread, shortbread cookies, M&Ms, and of course the accessory packet over here. I'd say overall, for the whole entire menu, a thumb and a half, but this is definitely the star of the show. This is very good. I would eat this anytime. Don't forget the giveaway. Announced on today's edition, we have these two pistol bayonet knives, but they're nice utility, short bladed for skinning or gutting, um, made by K-Bar both of them and we'll put those back in the sheath this one and this one 
So in order to win those, you have to comment in the comment section and just say which one you want. Either these together or this Coleman knife. And I suspect that this was made by Buck. It looks like a Buck knife. But it's a very handy utility knife. And I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't feel as though I didn't have a knife with me any time I was carrying that. I'd feel like I had a pretty good one. It also has a belt clip on the other side. Okay. All right. So let's see in those comments which one you want. Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. Live from Boise, Idaho. And we'll be back again in not too distant future with another MRE review. Or who knows what else. In the meantime, be safe. And get outside and do something fun. It's summertime, almost. Adios. Almost forgot we were going to give this moist towelette a try and see whether after 13 or 14 years in the MRE pouch if it still retained its moist towelette function or whether it's dry as a bone. So here we go. Let's open it. And guess what? It is just fine. Just as moist as it could be. You couldn't get a new one that had more more moisture on it than that. Look at how shiny my hands are. So, perfectly fine after all that time. Kind of puts the light of the modern ones, doesn't it, that dry out after about a year. There we go. Alright, we'll see you next time. Adios.